Can we just lift our hands and just glorify our Father? Just go ahead and just worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. His presence is here. Come and open your mouth and sing Him a new song. Tell Him how much you love Him. Just love on Him this morning. Father, we thank you. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I worship you with all my heart. With all is within me.
Are you ready to give God praise this morning? The Bible says, let everything that has well breath praise the Lord. Come on, ask your neighbor, are you breathing this morning? Say, do you have the breath of God in you this morning? Are you ready to give him praise? Come on. Let everything that has breath. 
time just lift up those hands as a sign of surrender I said this morning Lord I surrender all to you all my worries all my struggles I laid on your altar this morning come and open your mouth and just surrender your life surrender it all to him he is worthy he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy father we love you we love you, Jesus. There is only one name. There is only one name with power to save. With power to save. heaven and on earth there is there is only one Highly 
Can you jam those hands for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords? Can you make it up to Him? Give it Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, church. Can you tell your neighbor good morning? And say something nice to your neighbor this morning. Let's warm up this place a bit. Let's warm up this place a bit. Amen. Hallelujah. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am a child of God. I am precious in his hand. I am redeemed by the blood. I am justified by grace. I have a hope. A hope that is sure. A hope that is steadfast. A hope that is guaranteed. I am hidden in the secret place of the Lord. I am hidden in the secret place of the Almighty. So I decree and I declare this month of December, the Lord is my shield. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is my buckler. The Lord is the lifter up of my head. The Lord is my glory. I declare I will break forth in this month of December. I will break forth. I will break forth to the left. I will break forth to the right. I will break forth on every side. In the name of Jesus, I will break forth. In the name of Jesus, I declare that I am blessed. The Lord will bless me. He will bless my home. He will bless my family. And he will keep us, even as a church. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will cause his face to shine upon us. The Lord will be gracious unto me. The Lord will increase me more and more. I will not go down. The Lord will increase me. I will increase in strength. I will increase in numbers. I will increase in wealth. I will increase in my relationship with the Almighty God. In the name of Jesus, my children will increase. In wisdom, they will increase. In understanding, they will increase. Their health will not fail. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I decree, I go into this month with power. I will operate with power because the Lord is for me. Who can be against me? I will not go in fear. I will not lose my mind. I will walk in love. I will walk in his might. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree, the Lord will perfect all that concerns me. The Lord will perfect all that concerns me. I declare all things will work together. All things has come together for my good. In the name of Jesus, I receive good treasures. My heavens are open. My heavens are open. My heavens are open. My heavens are open. I will lend to nation. I will not borrow. The Lord will bless the work of my hand. Whatsoever I lay my hands to do, I declare it shall prosper. It shall increase. That I declare an enlargement in the name of Jesus. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be above only and not beneath. In the name of Jesus, my heart is exalted. My head is lifted. My heart is exalted. My head is lifted. My heart is exalted. My head is lifted. In the name of Jesus, the Lord anoint me afresh. Anoint me afresh to do exploit. Anoint me afresh to do great things. In the name of Jesus, I have come to my world of place. December, I have come to my world of place. December, I have come to my world in place. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will make a way where there seems to be no way. Oh, the Lord will make a way for me. In this month of December, the Lord will make a way for me. A way at the top. A way at the top. The Lord will make a way for me. And I will work upon my high places. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I decree over my life, over my home, over my spouse, over my children, no weapon formed against us. It shall not stand. It shall not prosper. No conspiracy will stand in the name of Jesus. No enchantment, no divination. It will not stand in the name of Jesus. I declare, I receive double for every shame I have suffered in time past. I receive double glory. I receive double honor in the name of Jesus. I receive double. I receive double. Double glory. Double lifting. Double anointing. Double increase in the name of Jesus. I declare 
this month of December, you will not swallow me. You will not swallow my home. You will not swallow my marriage. You will not swallow my family. You will not swallow my loved ones. You will not swallow my children. You will not swallow my health. You will not swallow my joy. You will not swallow my peace. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare. This is my month of double portion. I receive a double portion of his glory. I receive a double portion of his mercy. This is my month of a double portion. I receive a double portion of the anointed. I receive a double portion of his revelation. I receive a double portion of resources. I receive a double portion of wealth. I receive a double portion of wealth in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have decreed. In Jesus' name we have declared. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. If you believe it, shout a big amen. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. Let's sing together. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you, because you are wonderful. You to me and my family since January to the very last month of the year you've been wonderful to me I praise you I thank you I appreciate you I exalt you and I worship you you've been wonderful to me thank you for preserving my life thank you for helping me oh Lord thank you because I'm still standing I'm still standing in the midst of all of the challenges. I'm still standing. We worship, Lord. I've come to worship you. I've come to celebrate you. I've come to exalt you. Thank you, blessed Father. Thank you, glorious God. Thank you for January. Thank you for February. Thank you for much. Thank you for April. Thank you for May. Thank you for June. Thank you for July. Thank you for August. Thank you for September. Thank you for October. Thank you for November. And now for December. I appreciate you dearly Lord. I celebrate your faithfulness. And we worship your majesty. It's been you all the way. It's been you all the way. It's been you all the way. All the way. It's been you. It's been you. It's been you. Thank you for the gift of life. 
Thank you for the outpouring of your grace and power. Thank you for putting food on our table. Thank you for deliverance from every evil. Thank you for deliverance from every evil. Thank you for your help on every side. Thank you for every family. Thank you for all of our children. Thank you for our jobs, our businesses. We're grateful, Lord. We approach your throne this day with thanksgiving. We approach your throne with gratitude. Invisible God, you are a miracle worker. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are worthy, oh God. Yes, Lord. You are worthy, oh Lord. You be seen, God. You are a miracle worker. in our midst. None is missing in our midst. We return the glory to you, Lord, the great shepherd, the bishop of our soul. We return all the glory to you, Lord. None is missing. Nothing missing, nothing broken to the praise and to the glory of your name. Thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for answered prayers, Lord. Thank you for answered prayers, Lord. Thank you for comforting us in the midst of the many challenges. Thank you for strengthening our heart. We praise you, Lord. We exalt you. We adore you. We love you. With the whole of our heart, we celebrate you. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayer. Would you celebrate the King? Is that your very best? To the one who keeps, to the one who watches, to the one who upholds, to the one who sustains. We praise you, Lord. We celebrate you, Lord. And we adore you. We love you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worship. Good morning, everyone. It's our combined service. So just say it as we enjoy God's word together. And I title this. Fighting to win. You know, once you don't understand the dynamics of the kingdom, God wants you to understand the dynamics of the kingdom so that you will not struggle through life, through the year. It's the month of December. By now, you should be counting your blessings and naming them one by one and approaching his throne with gratitude. Approaching his throne with gratitude. You're not looking at the cup half empty. You're looking at the cup half filled. And you are super grateful. Because you know you will have been worse off if not for him. He will have been what? Worse off if not for him. So you give him all the glory. Amen. Amen. So fighting to win. That's one of the messages that can help you not to have a carryover blessing. There are many blessings hanging. And it is not good for you to have a carryover blessings. It's not good to enjoy the blessings of year 2023 in the year 2024. That's the devil, you know, playing games. And in this service, every blessing that wants to be carried over shall be released. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Fighting to win. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. It says fight the good fight of faith. But that's where we stop. And that's all that some people know. That God says we should fight a good fight. Number one, this fight is a good fight. Why? We always win. We always do what? Win. You will always win. Yeah, be because God is for you. You will always win. Especially if you understand all that it entails. You will always win. The devil will not laugh last against you. Amen. You will always win. Amen. That's why it's a good fight. We always win. We always win.
is winning. The kingdom of God is a camp of winners, not defeated people. Camp of winners, not defeated people. The kingdom of God is a camp of winners. So it doesn't matter what the time says in your life. You will win. You will win. But it says only fighters can win this fight. That's what that scripture says. Only fighters, not passive people. Not people who practice indifferent Christianity. Only fighters can win. Only fighters can win. Only fighters. And sometimes you are afraid of a fight. You don't want quarrel. You know, someone says, I don't want the problem of the devil. No. I just want to be here. I just want to be by my space. And I don't want to bind. I don't want to warfare. Is that you? Are, are you afraid to fight? Are you afraid of the devil? If there's something you're afraid of, and if that is fighting, then you can't win. You, and once you don't win, no accolades. There's no tri, trials of your faith. Your faith will have nothing to show for it because you are not battle ready. When God asked the children of Israel to leave Egypt, he asked them to go spy on the, on the promised land. And they brought evil report. And God discovered they were not battle ready. Life is not a play field. It's not a playground. Life is a battlefield. I don't know how long it's going to take you to realize that life is a battlefield. It's not a playing ground. It's a battlefield. And only fighters become winners. And you must not be ashamed to fight. You must not be scared of, 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 of fighting. You know, some fights are spiritual and some fights are physical. By the time you're telling someone, no, this is, this is my belief system. I cannot compromise with it. That's a physical fight. That's a physical fight. By the time you're telling someone, these things are not permitted in my space, that's a physical fight. The person is going to put up a fight against you. By the time you bind the devil, the devil will put up a fight against you. And God doesn't want us to be afraid of battles. He doesn't want us to be afraid of battles. Because you can't have rest until you have fought. If you have rest without fighting, that rest is fake. It cannot endure. The devil will show up again. But when you have fought, then you have rest. Then you have a rest that is permanent. Why? You have fought these battles. And some of us are just afraid. Afraid to fight. Why would you be afraid to fight? It says as from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And only those who are violent, they take it by force. By force. The things you want, they are not, they are not walkovers. They are not a walk in the park. You must fight. You must fight. You must enforce dominion. You must push the enemy away from your territory. You must say no. You know, he says submit to God, James chapter 4, verse 7. If you're on the slide, you just show the people because I don't I have so many scriptures today. He says, submit to God. And resist the devil. Unfortunately, the ministry of resisting the devil is not God's. It's yours. It's yours. You must resist the devil. That's why a Christian that is not battle ready will have a whole 12 months without testimony. Because you're not just battle ready or you're afraid. You're afraid of a fight. God says this is a good fight. Don't be afraid. It's a good fight and it's a fight of is a fight of faith. Is a fight of faith. And it just tells us what the fight is all about. Some people don't know what the fight is all about. It says, take hold of eternal life. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. If you're there, it says, fight the good. Let's read together. It says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Did you see? Lay hold. On eternal life. That's why the devil is fighting you. 
He doesn't want you to spend eternity with God in heaven. You don't know. Oh, you don't know why he wants you to go to hell. Yeah, that's why the reality of heaven and earth, you are blinded from that reality. That's, that's the attack of the devil. <laughs> You are blinded from that. The reason why Jesus came is so that you spend eternity in heaven. That's the reason why Jesus came. All this, your trouble, is because the devil is attacking your faith. Your faith in Christ. Your faith on the finished walk on the cross of Calvary. So that you don't lay hold on eternal life. That's what we tell people. Look at that scripture. It says, fight. And lay hold on eternal life. Look at it. Fight. They say, can a Christian backslide? Yes. Any message that tells you a Christian cannot backslide is from hell. A Christian can backslide. A Christian can go back to his vomit. A Christian can have a lifestyle that is not compatible with the kingdom of God. And the gate pass of eternity will not open when you get there. The gate pass, you know, I, I, was, I was with someone in Nigeria who was boasting. She thought like, the kingdom was about big houses, big cars, <laughs> plenty of money in the bank account. No! Mm, I love that echo. No. So she thought that's how we measure God's goodness. That's how God approves his people. No. We lay hold on eternal life. We lay hold on eternal life. You can be born again and not be established on the path of righteousness. Your heaven is not sure. You are born again, but you're not established. You are falling in and out of sin. You don't have a kingdom lifestyle. You have a worldly lifestyle. He says, I will tell you, he said, they call me Lord, Lord, and they do not do what I say. On the last day, what did they say he will do? I know you not. I know you not. I know you not. So you must know the direction of your faith. Faith is anchored on Jesus, the finished walk on the cross of Calvary. The finished walk on the cross of Calvary. Faith is not just possessing your possession. That's secondary. And I'm going to show you in God's word that that is secondary. Faith is to lay hold on eternal life. That's what Christ, the finished work of Christ guarantees. So that you are not a candidate for destruction. You know, the word of God started to tell us that some people are fatted calf. They're just waiting for slaughter on the day of destruction. They are made fat, but they are waiting on the day of destruction. Come to see our generation blinded by the reality of heaven and earth. Uh, heaven and hell. We are blinded. The devil has succeeded. They blind. Some people say God is so good, he can't send anybody to hell. It's so good. That's why he made a way so that you don't go to hell. His goodness leadeth to repentance so that you don't go to hell. That is the primary message of the kingdom. That you lay hold on eternal life. Let's read together one more time. It says fight the good fight of faith. Let's read together everyone. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. You, see, you must be careful of motivational speakers. Who we'll just pick a part of the Bible and gets you excited? Must be careful about them. That, that's not a church. They're not preaching God's word to you. Look at it. Lay hold or fight the good fight of faith. Read. Let's read together. Lay hold on eternal life. Eternal life. Eternal life. Lay hold on eternal life. Where unto thou art also called? And has processed a good profession before many weaknesses. Internal life. Internal life. That your soul will not go to hell. That you will spend eternity with God in heaven. That's why Jesus came. That you are saved and sanctified. Not just saved. You are saved and set apart for the Lord. Saved and sanctified. That's what Jesus came. And he began to tell you. He said, not many wise men. <laughs> this journey of eternal life is telling you that not many mighty men. 
not many. <laughs> In case you think it's about the guy who is rich. It's about the guy who's famous. It's about the guy who is smart. He says, not read with me. First Corinthians chapter 26 to 29. First Corinthians chapter 26 to 29. We're going to read together. First Corinthians chapter 26. Oh, I'm sorry. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 26 to 29. First Corinthians, if you're on the slide, you need to move very fast. Broke, if you're on the slide. First Corinthians, for ye see, let's read together in case. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh. Give me, give me, give me a note. See, I need to get someone excited in case you think the product that God, that Jesus sells is for the highest bidder. That's what I tell people who say they are called in ministry. And they put a price to it. How dare you? The kingdom of God is freely you have received. Freely give. How dare you? Put a price to internal things. To what Jesus died for. You're, you, it's not ministry you're doing. It's business you're doing. It's business you're doing. Look at it. Let's read together. Let's read together. It says... Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes. You see, not many wise. Or powerful. Or wealthy. When God called you. Not many wise. God is not like, God is not two and six people looking for rich men. Yeah. Looking for mighty men. Looking for famous men. No. No. The next verse. The next verse. Let's read together. Let's read together. Instead, God chose things the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise, they are rich, they are famous. God he bypassed them and chose you. Don't let anybody despise you. Yes. You know, I just came back from Nigeria. Someone was despising our members. No nonsense. You don't, you, you, the version you know of, of me here yeah, is gentle version. No? Very gentle version. <laughs> Very gentle version. You know, no, no. The people that Jesus shed his blood for, even though they are not perfect, they are God's people. They are God's people. They are precious people. Look at it. Instead, God chose things the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are something. <laughs> they, think they, are, they don't even know the product that Jesus is selling. They think it's big houses, breakthrough, financial breakthrough. No. That's a byproduct. That's not Our product is eternal life. Internal life. Please come forward. Internal life. Internal life. That's our product. That's the product that Jesus is selling. So that you don't go to hell. You make it to heaven. Are you here with me? Is anyone distracted? So that you don't go to hell. You make it to heaven. You make it to heaven. Not many rich. Not many wealthy. He decided not to save them. He decided to save you. You that you are a nobody. <laughs> he decided to reveal himself to you. He was his prerogative. He says that we have mercy on whomsoever. I want to have mercy on. I will have compassion on whomsoever. I want to have compassion on. It's my choice. He bypassed them to save you. So he's now telling you. Now, now that you are saved is a fighter. The devil will try everything possible to take your faith in Christ from you. In fact, we've never had this, this bad. We've never had it this bad. The devil twisting, perverting the truth. Perverting the truth. We've never had it this bad. We've never had wolves in sheep 
clothing. We've never had it this bad in the is indeed the end time. There's a day in the end time. That's why in the kingdom there's no respect of persons. God is not a respecter of persons. You can't respect that guy for being rich and you disrespect another person who is not. This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God. Did you hear? It said, instead, God chose the things the world considered foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. <laughs> are you not excited God chose you? Oh, you are not. I can't even hear you. Are you not excited God chose you? Yeah. So say the real thing is that the devil is coming. The devil is coming to fight you. And why the devil is fighting your marital destiny is because he wants you to let go of internal life. He wants you to be so frustrated. That's why he's fighting your finance. That's why he's fighting your marital destiny. That's why he's fighting your health. He's fighting your faith in Christ. So that you tell yourself, oh, how many years I've been born again? Nothing has happened in my life. And you go back to your vomit. And you do not know that the greatest thing that God has is the salvation of your soul. And you must never lose it. You must never lose it. Turn with me. Let's read this story together. Let's read this story together. Let's read this story together. It's in the book of Luke, chapter 16, from verse 19. Luke 16, from verse 19 to 31. Now, you're going to just be calm, and we read together. Be very calm as we read together. Amen. Anytime Jesus tells a story, he wants you to pick out the wisdom, the point, the message in the story. Don't miss the message in this story. Are you ready? And Jesus said, there was a certain rich man. Say rich man. Rich man. Yeah. Is God against the rich? No, he's not against the rich. But, but many rich people got their wealth eh? in very funny ways. Unfortunately, because you don't have design made, you, you can't design and some other rich people, they allow their wealth to be their God. Money is a servant. Money is a tool. There's no big deal about money. Money is a tool. And the best thing you can do is for God to make you. He says, follow me. I will make you. When God makes you, it's different from when the devil makes you. It's different from when hard work. And so every time you say, oh, it's my hard work. That made me successful. You're not giving the glory to God. But is God against the rich? No. He has made many people rich. God has made many people rich. But because people get rich at the expense of their souls, people are rich at the expense of their souls. People are rich at the... Don't be envious of anyone. People are rich at the expense of their souls. Let's read together. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendid, splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen. God is trying to paint the picture now how rich this guy is and who lived each day in luxury. <laughs> he lived each day in luxury. The next verse. At his gate laid a, a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. You see, it's a comparison that we will really, really help you this morning. As Lazarus, verse 21, as Lazarus laid there longing for straws from the rich man's table, the dogs will come and lick is open source. Look at how, look at that level of suffering. Look, and God was seated in heaven. 
looking at the rich, enjoying in luxury, and looking at the poor, hustling and suffering. That's why you, you, must, you must not judge. He wants us not to judge anything before time. He wants us read your Bible every day. You will know who God is. He wants us don't judge anything before your time. Don't hear his story and judge anything before the time. He warned us. And he said, from the rich man's table, the dogs will come and lick his open sores. The next verse. Finally, the poor man died. The poor man died. The rich man also died. The poor man died. The rich also died. Everybody we die. <laughs> Please come forward. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> will go. <laughs> you know, before when I was, I used to be afraid of that, but now I'm not afraid anymore. I've grown in Christ. I'm not. I'm not. Please come forward. Everybody will go. <laughs> you, you know, it's a good reminder to also always remind yourself that you will go. Is a very good thing to know that your time here is so short and you will go. You see, the rich man died. The poor also died. The rich died. The poor also died. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels. You see the difference? What was it about the poor man? That made angels carry them. He wasn't poor because he chose to be poor. He was poor because he probably resisted the temptation that the devil brought his way. He resisted it. He said, I would rather lack than steal. I would rather lack than join these people, these Nigerians doing credit card fraud. I would rather, I would rather. He endured contradictions because quickly in the book of James, the word of God came to us that our faith will be tried. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. Let's read together. We'll come back to that look. Give me James chapter 1 verse 1. James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. He says our faith will be tried. We'll come back to this. He uh, says our faith will be tried. Let's read together. The Aloyat... James chapter 1 verse 2 yeah this verse 2 verse 2 not verse 1 verse 2 because of dear brothers and sisters when troubles of any kind come your way consider it as opportunity for great joy it's opportunity for great joy why, why, why did the bible say that's an opportunity for great joy because God converts this kind of suffering to glory and now not glory not necessarily glory here on this planet, internal weight of glory. And I will show you in the Bible. Internal weight of glory. That means some things you are going through here will not be rewarded here. It will be rewarded at the other side. Tell your neighbor, God knows about it, the pain. And it will reward that pain. Say it again, God knows about the pain. And it will reward that pain. Look at it. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind, so sometimes you want to ask yourself, is, why is, is it only me? Ah, the word of God says rejoice. Because your glory at the other side is awesome. Ooh, ah, you know our time here is short. Very short. Very, very short. But that side is forever. The other side is forever. So it says, all joy, because God converts suffering to glory. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. Don't give it, don't give me that scripture. Roman, God converts suffering to glory. And he converts it to internal glory. Internal glory. So if you are not resisting temptations, eh, you are losing. You are losing. If you're not resisting temptations, you are losing. 
Your body wants this, you give it to your body. Your body, you, you, someone is saying, I, I. You are losing if you're not resisting temptations. The next verse, the next verse, verse three, verse three. It says, for you know that when your faith is tested, when your faith, you know how difficult it is to believe that Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord? It's so easy to believe God is God. The real deal of your faith is that Jesus Christ is Lord. You know how difficult is that? That's what the devil is trying. Testing your faith. Because heaven is for believers. Heaven is for believers. It's testing your faith. All those problems coming your way. God knows about it. And God allowed the devil. Because God wants you to have internal weight of glory. Internal weight of glory. God wants your future here to be glorious. He also wants you at the other side to have internal weight of glory. You know, some people are excited about tomorrow, but there's nothing in their tomorrow with God. Nothing in their tomorrow. Nothing. They have not resisted temptation. Yes, they have not given to, to the advancement of the kingdom. Yes, nothing in their tomorrow. They are not loving their neighbors. Nothing in their tomorrow. Nothing in their tomorrow. And they are saying tomorrow will go better. Fake. Fake. Look at our, uh, our just concluded anniversary. You didn't care, you didn't give, and you are saying tomorrow will go better. Which, which better? When you are not advancing the kingdom with us, and you, you call those advancing that kingdom fools if they don't have what to do with their money. You even told, you tell them to go and give it to the poor. You are setting up the poor against the kingdom of God. You've not done anything about tomorrow. So tomorrow can now yield for you. Look at it. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Then verse 4. So let it grow. Your endurance, your stamina, has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect. I, I thought you will be perfect when all your problems are solved. God says, no. <laughs> when your endurance, when you have developed stamina, that's the time God knows that no matter what the devil does, you're not going back. No matter what the devil does, God is sure you are not. He said, I know Abraham. He will teach his children the way of the Lord. God says, I know. I know. That's the day on all this evil projection. They will just give up. They say, I don't want to waste my arrow. This one, it can never fall. <laughs> we, have, we have thrown all the problem at him, health problem, marital problem. She's still standing. I love that heckle. Take it home. It's got to take it away. <laughs> yeah. She's still standing. She's telling the devil, you can do your worst. Jesus is Lord over my life. And I'm established on the path of righteousness. Jesus is Lord over my life. Do your worst. You see that some of us have not started with the Father. Not started with the Father. That's why I thought it's when all the problems are solved. No, it's when you develop stamina, endurance. And when heaven knows that nothing that the devil can do again, that you will change your confession. Nothing that the devil can do again. Your finance, you are still standing. Your, mo your health, you are still standing. Look at the, it was God who called the attention of the devil to Job. It was God who created problem for Job. Think about it. Think about it. He says, my soul will not be 
happy with the people who go back. No. We, we don't, there's no hammer for your back. We don't. We continue on this journey of righteousness, of this journey of faith. We continue with all of the hardship. We continue. We continue, beloved. Take me back to verse 19. So, listen to this. The, uh, uh, being perfect has nothing to do with a problem-free life. It has everything to do with developing stamina. Uh, developing stamina. He says, I don't done all. He says, you, stand. Stand. I haven't done all. Stand. Take me back. Let's read together. Verse 19. Jesus said, there was a... I can hear you. Let's read together. Jesus said, there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple. Do you understand that the most powerful instrument contending with God is mammon? It's not Satan directly. It's money! The most powerful weapon contending with God. I have 10 more minutes. I'm watchful of the time. Is money. 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 And the pleasures of life. That's why he says, He that loveth pleasure, why live it? Is dead. Is <laughs> <laughs> <He's> dead. <laughs> what do we do now? We hide people with luxury, luxurious life. <laughs> we say God is good to them. Who told you? Did you hear? Not many wise, not many mighty, not many rich. He bypassed them to choose you. Instead of you to come and look for God. You know what we come to look for in church? The grace of God. It is that grace of God that is translated to many other things. We're reading together. Verse 20. Move to the next. We're reading together. One, two, three, go. And... At his gate laid a poor man named Lazarus who was covered, ah, suffering too much. He was even at the mercy of human being. Yeah. You can imagine how many times they will have despised this Lazarus. How many times they will have spoken derogatively about him. You can imagine how he went through life deprived. The next verse. And as Lazarus, verse 22, let's move quickly because of our time. Verse 22. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham. Does that look like what you want? Eh? Unfortunately, it's not by a mouth. By your lifestyle. Only leave it. By your lifestyle. By you enduring action. Saying no to temptation. Especially temptations of money. Temptations of immorality. Temptations of fame. Elijah felt he was the only prophet. <laughs> because he was the only one God gave fame. Yeah, so if God didn't, you know, that was the last thing I overcame in my work with God. I overcame fame, desire for fame. I overcame it. So I started to tell God, if it's 100 people you want me to pass on till I live here, I'm okay. If it's 200 people, God, I'm okay. 
I overcame fame. Elijah said, Oh, I'm the only one. He was shocked. <laughs> you know how you think you are the you are the most only. <laughs> only are the thou people. Elijah was like that too. <laughs> you don't know how many people are living for God and they are not making noise? <laughs> you think you are the only than thou. That's why you criticize everything. <laughs> only and than thou. Criticize everybody. <laughs> Elijah said, I'm the only one. Ah. Elijah was shocked when God revealed to him, I have 7,000. Not 10. Not 700. 7,000. So there are witnesses against you. <laughs> God has enough of witnesses against you that they walk this path. They were faced with temptation of immorality and they overcame. That's why we send you to hell confidently. He has, he has, he has witnesses. He will call his witnesses in case you think it is not possible. You complain. It's not possible. It's not possible, Lord. I tried my best, but I wasn't perfect. <laughs> he will call witnesses. Enough witnesses. Those who resisted temptation for money. He has them. He will call witnesses. You know God operates by witnesses. He will call witnesses. And his grace was sufficient enough to see them through this wicked war. He will call witnesses to those who separated themselves from the system of the world. He has witnesses. That's why this journey is a personal journey. Don't be deceived. Don't do common. This journey is one on one. No husband, no wife. It's one on one with the Lord. No family, no child, no. It's one on one with the Lord. You want angels to receive you. Or you want to begin to experience the ministry of angels. Begin to live holy. You can't have the ministry of angels if you don't live holy. Look at the double life that you have. After you say Pastor Mo is preaching harsh. Look at the double life. God sent me to preach like this. Because those other people are deceiving you. Look at the double life you have. Look at how after we close. Just look at the immediately after we close. How you tell lies like autopilot. <laughs> Premeditated lies. <laughs> yeah. You don't care about the holy living. Angels can receive you. Your time here will soon be up. Your heart will stop beating. Time here will soon be up. Your money will not be able to save you. Your connections will not be able to save you. Your popularity, your fame will not be able to save you. All will be like a waste. Have you ever seen people on their dying bed? They don't care about their certificates anymore. They don't care about anything. They just care about their relationships. Relationship with God and relationship with family. Don't care again. Let's finish. We'll close in a moment. Finally, the poor man died. Read with me. One, two, three, go. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to sit beside Abraham at the heavenly banquet. Is a banquet. Because it's reward time. Reward time. Is reward time. Time is reward. Time. All the suffering that you think God does not know about, he knows about it. And he's going to reward it. He's going to reward your pain. Everything you went through here, he's going to reward it. That's why when we walk with God, as soon as we come into God's kingdom, God says, I'm the God of patience. So faith is long term. Oh, pastor, when would this my problem end? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know.
Because with God, you must be patient. He introduces himself to you quickly as the God of patience. Look at it. He carried by the angels beside him and at the heavenly banquet. He's a banquet. He's a banquet. Too much enjoyment forever. That's why the devil has blocked your mind. You can't see it. And in this service, the Lord will tear the veil open. Amen. You will see the reality of eternity. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And you will stop playing games with your faith. Stop playing games with your faith. Stop playing games with your faith. The rich man also died and was buried. The next verse. Let's read together. Let's read together. And when he went to the place of the dead, there in torment he saw Abraham in a far... That's the rich man. Oh. That's the rich man. The one who thinks money is everything, can kill for money, can lie for money, can do fake documentations to make money. I asked for a lady of recent. They told me she's in jail. Why? Home health fraud. If I'm your pastor, I will escort you to the door. <laughs> Home health fraud. Jesus preached contentment more than abundance. The message of Jesus, contentment more than abundance. I don't know where Nigerians got to this grid. We worship money. Too much. And the more you lay hold on money outside God, the more your sorrow multiplies. Stop it. It's, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Stop it. It's not worth it. The little that God provides for you, be contented. Who do you want to make a statement for? You know how many rich people commit suicide in America? Google it. Google it, you will see it. How many rich people commit suicide? If the money you want to kill yourself over, they have it and they committed suicide. Google it. The grace of God is more powerful than money. Yes. The grace of God is more powerful than money. The grace of God. That's what we come to get in church. The grace of God. More powerful than money. I'll close in a moment. So, let's finish. And they went to the place of the dead. There, in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. Do you know that 95% of people that are rich they will struggle to have that. it would be a miracle for them to make heaven Jesus said it because they trust in their riches they trust in their riches God doesn't want you to trust in riches he says riches they are deceitful he doesn't want you to trust in riches he wants you to trust in him He wants you to trust in him. He doesn't want you to trust in riches. So he takes you through the route of no money. He takes us, every one of us, through the route of no money. And he's watching. If you will complain like the people in the wilderness complained. If you complain, you repeat that class. If you complain, you repeat that class until you become big, big. Bigger than the class. Like, have you seen big for nothing people? They, they are supposed to be in uh, college. They are still in elementary. Thank you. They are still in elementary. That's what we have in our churches. Still in elementary. That's what we have in our churches. It would take you through the route of no money. It takes a, Listen, I'm from, my mother is from an averagely well-to-do family. 
In fact, they were almost the richest in my state at a point, in the whole of my state. My maternal grandfather was almost the richest in the whole state at a point. So you, you, you can tell how I grew up. And worst case scenario, now maybe we are a little bit more than average in the family. God took me through the route of no food, no where to stay. I was sleeping in a church, uncompleted building. Yeah. So I, there's no money that can just rip over me. I will let go. I will let go. It will always take you through the route of no money. And it will watch you if you will develop endurance. Did you see that James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4? If you will develop endurance. The people God is looking for. Not the people that will solve all their problems. The people that will develop endurance. Read it when you get home one more time. Verse 24. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham. Read with me. I'm almost done. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip. Ah! Look at what the rich man is now looking for. <laughs> the sagefulness of riches. The riches that you are supposed to deploy for the kingdom. So that God, you know, there's so, there's so much money in the hand of individuals that are corrupted. They are not blessed. Corrupted. The more money they have, the more their sorrow multiplies. Corrupted money. The only solution to that money is to deploy it for the advancement of the kingdom and for that of humanity. That's the only solution. That's the only solution. That's the only solution. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Saint Lazarus, over here to dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in this flame. It looks like fake, right? The devil wants you to think it's fake. The devil wants you to think it's figurative. <laughs> the devil wants you to think it's figurative. It's, it's, it's. <laughs> Jesus preached hair fire. Eh? More than any other message. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. More than any other message. Because he doesn't want to. He wants it. He's warning you so that you don't go there. You don't go there. He says, walk out to your salvation with fear and tremble so that you don't go there. Verse 25. We're interested. Verse 25. We're really interested. Can we be all standing? Thank you. Let's show that we have regards for his word. Verse 25. <laughs> Are you ready? Can we be all standing? Are you ready? Uh, this is a game changer. Are you ready? Uh, I can't, now your voice has dropped. <laughs> You're ready. One, two, three, go. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime, you had everything you wanted. God is a righteous judge. You are not forgotten. You are not forsaken. You are not forgotten. You are not forsaken. What you are going through is a plus. It's not a minus. Reward time. Your reward will be big. Amen. Look at it. In your lifetime, you had everything you wanted. And Lazarus had nothing, 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 nothing. 
So when you despise people that are struggling, that you don't know, when you despise people that are going through stuff, it's the dealings of God. You, you, you think you're better than them? It's the dealings of God. I told you about someone who called our members, all sorts of names. I checked the person out. I don't joke. These are the people of God. You don't call them names. How dare you? Call the people that was washed clean by the blood of Jesus' names. I don't joke. Listen. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime, you had everything you wanted. And Lazarus had nothing. Can, can you? That's why, listen to this. There's a realm that is higher than faith. It's called trust. You might not know what's happening with, in your life. Just trust God. Just trust him. Can you just find a way to trust God and not be angry with God? And be angry with say, the people that are blessed more than you. Eh? Stop it. Just trust God. That God is the one rocking my boat and he knows exactly what he is doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. You had everything you wanted. Lazarus had nothing. So now, he's here being comforted and you are in anguish. The Lord will comfort you. Amen. I don't know what you're going through, but the Lord knows and he will comfort you. Amen. He knows and he will comfort you. Amen. He knows and he will comfort you. Amen. The next verse, verse 27. Oh, so sorry, verse 26. And besides, there is a great just between separating us. So, no, you know, we, we, we don't have anything in common. There's no connection again. You can't repent after death. You can't repent. It will be too late. All you will be hearing are the messages that Pastor Mo preached to you. And you rejected them. You prefer to listen to someone deceiving you. It will be too late. So now is the time of salvation. Not that you are coming to church that God will solve your problem. That's not the primary product that God sells. The primary product is that your soul is secured. It's secured. It's secured. Look at it. And beside it, okay. That no one can cross over to you from here. And no one can cross over to us from there. It's final judgment. Final judgment. After death is judgment. This is your opinion. is because you are still here. After death is judgment. Judgment. You face the throne and you give account for your life. And everything you have done is recorded by heaven. All those secrets. Recorded by heaven. The next verse. The next verse. Let's read together. Don't let your voice drop. God is still merciful to you. The judgment day has not yet come. So you can still make a decision today. Don't, don't wait until tomorrow. Today. Verse 27. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home. Now he's now asking for an evangelist. <laughs> the evangelist that they despise. You know, they think we're always begging for money. <laughs> They despise us. Yes. Even family members despise us. You are in America. You can go and work for a dollar. They are saying God has called you. <laughs> yeah. They despise us. All the time they despise us. Now he's not looking for an evangelist. Angels don't preach the gospel. You don't know. Angels don't preach the gospel. It's we. Pastors. Evangelists. Apostles. Teachers. We are the ones who preach the gospel. Angels don't have that authority. Let's read together. We're almost done. For I have what? <laughs> For I have five brothers. And I want, I want him to warn them. So that they don't end up. Yeah. Everyone that has died and didn't make heaven. That's their heart cry. That you, that you are still alive, will defy everything and choose Jesus and repent 
and be grounded in holiness. Everyone that has died, that's their desire for you. That you will not come where they are. You will not come where they are. If they didn't make heaven, all those barriers that we come and we say, thank God, now they are here, the, the man has made heaven. Uh, the pastors, they don't, they don't know, they, they don't want you to stone them. <laughs> the man didn't make heaven anything. <laughs> if you are not in Christ and living holy, you are not in Christ and living holy, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. Whether we, whether we write your name on our list as our member. Uh, you ain't going nowhere. Let's read together. We're almost done. For I, for I have five brothers, five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. Yeah. That's what the package of salvation is all about. So that you don't go to hell. You make it to heaven. You don't go to hell. You make it to heaven. It's not for you to have financial breakthrough. It's not for you to have marital breakthrough. All those are secondary. They are perishables. There's no marriage in heaven. They don't, they didn't tell you. Every marriage is dissolved here. No marriage in heaven. Marriage is overrated. You don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Marriage is overrated. No marriage in heaven. Every marriage dissolved here. So don't let, don't practice evil partnership in your marriage. When your spouse is wrong, sit your spouse down and say you are wrong. And I don't agree with you on this matter. I trust my wife. She says it to me all the time. <laughs> I don't know. You're wrong. There's no marriage in heaven. Oh, you've not heard? You think it's a joke? Marriage is overrated. It is dissolved. Yeah. It's to help you to make heaven any marriage that is not helping you to make heaven, come and see me in my office. Yeah. But he, but Abraham said, Moses and the prophet. Look at it. Let's read together. We're almost done. I'm sorry. We're almost done. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have won them. Mm. Mm. Your brothers can read what they wrote. Even me. I know I'm doing my job. Don't you think so? Don't you think so? I'm doing my job. You can answer that. <laughs> I'm doing my job very well. Yeah. You see? There's no spectacular that God is going to send you away. All this you're reading and saying, God, the Holy Spirit knocked down Paul on the way to Damascus. How many times did you see God do that in the Bible? You can't make an exception, the rule. They didn't tell you. You can't make an exception, the rule. You commune with your own heart and repent. Accept Jesus and repent. Talk to yourself and say, this lifestyle, I can't continue like this. I will change. I will accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior and change. Are you ready? You, you have to read this loud. If you're not loud, you will read it 20 times. Mm. This is my own classroom. One, two, three, go. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, if someone is sent to them from the dead, they will repent of their sins and turn to God. The next verse. Loud enough. Please let that be. One, two, three, go. But Abraham said, if they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, they will be persuaded. Even if someone rises from the dead. Have you ever seen people go to burial ceremony and they mourn and they see people dying? Even coronavirus, they saw millions of body parts. You would think everybody would be holy. After coronavirus, all those emotional decisions, they don't last. They don't last. You will think there will be a revival after coronavirus. <laughs> they don't last. They don't last. So you say, even if someone comes from the dead, 
as he's saying the story like this, the uh, people are saying, mm, fake. <laughs> fake. I said, I, in the place I was preaching, I told them I went to heaven and I joined them to sing a song. And I, I didn't want to wake up again. I think I've told you. Yeah. yeah. I saw some people, uh, all these preachers. <laughs> See, emotional decisions don't help. It must be decisive. I remember many times I made up my mind I was going to surrender my life. I actually tried four times. One, I wanted to pass my exams. And I used to use mercenary in those days. <laughs> so I went back. The second one. You know, once you give your life to Christ, the babe that you have been chasing, that said no. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs. Will. We suddenly say yes. <laughs> so the second word was immorality. The third one will make you angry. The third one, I'd given my life in a church. I'd made up my mind. I said, this is my friend. After we get home, I will never walk with him again. So after that service, we went to eat. So after eating, we had to swim. <laughs> now, the hodge. Ah, it's not easy. <laughs> I backslid it because of cigarettes. <laughs> You know, if I had someone who told me you can continue the journey and believe God that the habit will break. But I didn't have anybody to tell me that. I, I backslid it because of. So, the fourth time I now made up my mind, I will run to Ghana. Yeah, because God was really working on me. He was working on me. That's why I know that everyone you see that is dead, untimely, the Holy Spirit walked, walked. They resisted him. They resisted it. God was working on me. So I planned to go to Ghana. So I said, okay, when I graduate, you know how you postpone your salvation? <laughs> <laughs> Some of us are here, you are like me. You oh. <laughs> say, when I have money and I, and I make it, you see, <laughs> I have someone who is admitting it. <laughs> when I have money and I make it. <laughs> So it was that I didn't pass that year. So I didn't graduate. God, strategic. I didn't pass and I didn't graduate. And you know, when I was in school, my lecturers, they don't call me by my first name. They call me Mr. Morayo. Lecturer. <laughs> I was that, uh, you know. <laughs> so I, I did everything. I had money. I did everything. I didn't graduate. It was as if people say you are not going anywhere. I am not going anywhere. So one night, the Holy Spirit came to speak to my heart and said, This is your last chance. After this, no more. It was that time that I surrendered my life. And it, it was so, the Holy Spirit was so nice to me. Everybody was going home. He said, don't go home. If you go home, you will backslide. Stay on campus. Stay in church with your pastor. So I stayed in church, managing whatever I could eat. And my pastors discipled me. I didn't go home for almost a year and a half. And my pastor discipled me. See, you're coming to church without being discipled is a waste. A waste if you're not well discipled, it's a waste. Look at it, it's a, you can't pray in the spirit since you are becoming to get that purpose. You're not filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. If we tell you, give us 20 scriptures that you know of, and you'll be cracking, you will get to the middle of the road. You'll be saying, uh, Philippi chapter <laughs> because you know, you know, look at it. Emotions will help. Amen. Rededicate your life in this service. Will you do that right now? Lord, I rededicate. Lift up those hands. Lift up those hands. And say, I rededicate my life to Jesus, my Lord and my Savior. Tell him, I mean it now, Lord. I do not want to go to hell. 
I want to abide in your presence. I want to make it to glory. I want to abide in your presence all the days of my life. Help me, Lord. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Celebrate grace. Celebrate grace. Amen. Please be seated. You need to help me tell our members, Pastor is back. And I'm waiting for the day. Thank God. At least we have sizable attendance uh, today. Thank God for those who will not travel when Pastor travels. It means you are growing. It means you have taken responsibility. Because Pastor, in the next two years, Pastor will not be the only person preaching to you. Yeah. We will structure this church that you will become a preacher. Amen. I told them in our Lagos church, they thought it was a joke. Now, they are running their church themselves. I'm a traveling evangelist. That's my job. That's what God has said to me will be the next phase of my ministry. Traveling evangelist. So, please, I beg of you, listen to this message one more time and make the right decision. I'm going to close this, mess this service because our time is far. No testimony today. We'll take our testimony. Uh, we're hitting, we're, okay, we have snacks today, but we're hitting every two Sundays. Where's Joe? Joe is feeding us. Joe and Jessica, they are feeding us one Sunday. Where's Joe? Yeah. Okay, no, no, not yet, Joe. <laughs> God bless you. So it's going to be, the next two Sundays is going to be awesome. Yeah, that's Joe. Joe and Jessica, they are feeding us. Awesome. Please don't hit for four days. <laughs> Amen. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tell Joe how we do about the feeding that has to do with our service. We have changed our policy. There's a way we get our food from once you're having an event. Oh, Titus, we need to pay. We're still struggling with some bills in our uh, anniversary. We, we need Titus to just tight give their tithes this morning. I told you that it's only tithers that helps this work. Only tithers help this work. Uh, please give your tithe uh, uh, and the Lord will bless you greatly. Amen. Um, okay, let me allow you If this is your first time in Kingdom Purpose Assembly, we'd like to say a big thank you. We had quite a number of first-timers during the program and after the program. We'll follow them up. Amen. If this is your first time, just wave your hand. How are you, Matt? Is this your first time? Wow. Oh, she's been here. Okay. First time. You see how you don't invite people to church and you want God to be so excited about you? Repent now. Let be, Make it your weekly that I must get two people to church every week and walk towards it and you will testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, okay. The grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever.